Hi, I'm Kristen, and this is the Simple Handmade Everyday Podcast, where I talk about living a creative, intentional life. I like to chat about quilting, sometimes knitting, what I'm reading and watching, and a little bit about keeping a cozy, organized home. I've got my cup of tea in hand, so let's settle in for a chat. This is episode 67. Welcome. Welcome, friends. How are you? So good to be back. I took a little... Uh, break a little three week break instead of a two week um, between podcast episodes just because I was a little bit overwhelmed last weekend to be honest with you just a lot of projects going on which we'll talk about in a few minutes but before I forget do you have something fun to drink while you're listening I've got um, a new tea to talk about it's the Harney and Sons black currant it says juicy and aromatic with sweet black currant so it's a black tea and um I don't like flavored teas, but this is very subtle. It's it's lovely. Actually, I had a birthday a couple weeks ago, and uh, my daughter, who knows me so well, we have zero problems buying gifts for each other. Um, she got me a very cute mug and this new tea. And I got her something fun and tea-related for her birthday, which is coming up, but I won't tell you what that is until afterwards. So one of the other things that I got for my birthday um, is big planter boxes. I think I talked last episode about um, me wanting to redo this section of our backyard that is where a concrete wall between houses meets patio and it is completely uninspiring and you can't grow really vines there because there's no dirt. So I stumbled across, I don't even know where, um, well through Instagram ads. I have been the sucker of some Instagram ads lately. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I'll tell you about the other one later, but this one is a company called Gardenary and which is supposed to be like gardening is ordinary and she's got a podcast and she's got a class that can teach you to be a kitchen garden consultant but she um, has this ebook for how to build these very pretty planter boxes and they were exactly kind of what I was looking for and so my husband um, said he would build them and we bought the ebook and we're looking through it and it needs changes because her boxes are meant to sit on the ground um, not the patio, which means they don't have a bottom. So it's all like raised bed planters is what we're talking about here. And so um, we're going through it and we're, you know, trying to figure out what materials do we need to buy? Like, is there equipment we need to buy? And it was kind of clear that we don't really have the right equipment. And um, at some point I said, you know, I think it might be better for our marriage if we just hire someone to do this. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, I think that's a great idea. And so um, I actually have a friend who's a woodworker who's down in San Diego, actually. But he's kind of between jobs right now. And I'm like, would you like to build these for me? And he is like, yes. So so th that's happening. And um, I've got an excuse to drive down to San Diego, which is about three hours away from us. Because um, we are in the middle of a college acceptances and rejections and all that for my high school senior and um, so my two older kids both went to UC San Diego and um, the the baby of the family has also been accepted at UC San Diego amongst other places so there will be many many college visits over spring break in a couple weeks and um, it's just unfortunate because you know there's no tours anymore but you can go on campus and walk around and kind of get the feel of the place um, which is going to have to have to do now he has been dragged along on many college tours um, so he's we're kind of in some ways um, focusing on places that we never got to you see Santa Cruz you see Davis places like that so so we'll see how that all pans out but man I'll be honest with you, I am glad that this is our last rodeo <laughs> with college applications and acceptances. It is in college decisions. It is um, it is so stressful. So yeah, last week I was just feeling kind of overwhelmed. Um, that youngest kid also, my, uh, my college senior, got his wisdom teeth out. And I'm going to be honest with you that I had forgotten how exhausting it is to be kind of a full-time hands-on caregiver. <laughs> You know, I don't really have to do that anymore. I've got older kids, but uh, you know, I, I took him and brought him home and was running to, to the grocery store to try to figure out what he could eat, all the, you know, soft foods. And when you've got a like six, four, 18 year old kid, he's a bottomless pit. So keeping him full um, on soft foods was, was rough, but I kind of finally figured it out, which is nice because uh, my daughter got her wisdom teeth out a couple days ago. So uh, Ben was like a, a trial run. <laughs> 
for for Chloe's. It's usually the other way around. Chloe's the the experimental one. We make all our mistakes on her. By the time we get to Ben, he, everything comes easy, right? So it was reversed. But, um, but you know, just running to the grocery store and the drugs and keeping track of the pain pills and the antibiotics and all the stuff. It was just like I went to bed that night going, oh, my gosh, I'm exhausted. So, um, so we have that going on. We had our uh, patio cover ripped down and rebuilt and repainted. Um, we thought we were getting solar panels. That fell apart the moment of, of like, the morning of installation. Um, yeah. Oh, we've got the sick kitty who's sitting right next to me right now. My little kitty tiger who is, um, oh my gosh, almost 16 years old is not well. And I just don't know honestly how much longer we have to go with him, but it has been constant trips to the vet. Let me tell you how often I go to the vet. And because it's, you know, COVID, I don't really go a lot of other places. When I get in my car, um, Google Maps, my phone, my iPhone just tells me how far I am from the vet. Like I can be in a different town, like at a library. And when I, when I turn on my car, it'll tell me how far it is to the vet. <laughs> so it is clearly the number one place that I go. But um, so yes, yeah, so just kind of a lot of crazy stuff going on. But it's spring. This is uh, March 21st, 2021. Yesterday was the first day of spring. And I could not be more excited. Although we, my husband and I went to many nurseries yesterday um, trying to figure some stuff out. We're replanting the hanging pots that we have on our patio cover, and we thought we'd go get some fresh plants. And and apparently it's, it's a little early in the season, I think, because there was nothing, I don't know, I was uninspired. We went to four nurseries, um, all outdoors, masked and all that, but yeah, um, nothing good. We came home empty-handed after hours of looking at plants. So that was disappointing. But I said, you know what, maybe for the next couple of weeks, we just would be better served to, to um, really, you know, do the, the maintenance, just, you know, go through and weed and, and stuff. And I, I, this year, I wanted to get things into the garden earlier, because um, I always regret that if we wait until April or into May before we like, you know, plant tomatoes and things like that, because, you know, uh, they take a while to to come to fruition, so to speak. So, but uh, I think we jumped the gun a little bit this year. So that's what's been going on in my neck of the woods. But before we move on to the quilting segment, I'd like to thank the Fat Quarter Shop for sponsoring the podcast. Fat Quarter Shop is a one-stop show for quilting fabrics and supplies for quilters around the world. They stock quilt shop quality fabrics, pre-cuts, quilt kits, patterns, notions, and even cross-stitch supplies. Join Fat Quarter Shop for their 14th annual Designer Mystery Block of the Month Club. This quilt will leave you with a sugar rush with 12 sampler blocks by designers from Moda Fabrics to sweeten the deal. Each quilt block finishes at 12 inches square and features the strawberry and rhubarb fabric collection by Fig Tree Quilts for Moda Fabrics. This club is perfect for beginners and experienced quilters. It runs from June 2021, so it's coming up soon, to May 2022 and ships around the 10th of every month. I'll put a link in the show notes. You are not going to want to miss this. All right, let's talk quilting. I kind of want to apologize right now that my quilting content lately, and including this podcast, has been a little bit lacking. Um, you know, I've got the handpiece quilt along going on right now, which, you know, takes a lot of time. Um, I'm, you know, sewing along with the quilt along. And uh, I've just been really uninspired to drag that machine out. Um, it's just more fun to sit and hand sew and, you know, watch a show with the family, watch my own shows, uh, listen to a podcast or a book. So I'm just, I'm really loving that. And I'm actually getting to the point now with the beautiful weather that I don't like to sit inside. Um, to you know so i want to sit outside which hand sewing or knitting things like that um it's just a lot it just fits into that that season a lot better but um so i'm I'm working on the handpiece quilt along are you sewing along with this we've got some new people this time and um everybody is sharing these lovely lovely fabric combinations people are learning a lot so you know the handpiece quilt along is mine and uh, patty from elm street quilts it's our baby and we're loving that um, I did finish my big throw size handpiece quilt along quilt. I'm just doing the, the wall hanging size for the quilt along that I'm sewing concurrently. Um, so I need to put together a quilt back and figure out how I'm going to quilt that. Now, Patty did this lovely spiral quilt quilting on hers. And I just kind of want to copy that, to be honest with you. But I do not have a great setup 
for for quilting. Now what I could do is just set that set my um, machine down at the kitchen table. You know, big tables like that are good, and just so you know, spiral quilting can be a little bit not mind numbing. Actually, just even you know, straight line quilting, it's just it kind of takes forever. So you just need a good book or something like that, and I can probably just you know put in an hour of spiral quilting, listening to a book, and then put it all away and bring it out another evening or, or something like that. So that's that's on the table, so to speak. Um, I've got some kids moving out soon in the next few months, and there's part of me that's just like, maybe you should just wait um, until until they go out and you can kind of get, get reset up with my, my sewing space. Um, but I don't know, that seems like a long time to wait. So So those things are kind of floating around in the back of my head. Do you lose masks? We keep losing masks. <laughs> and every week I put on my things to do, make masks, and then I don't do it because I kind of hate making masks. But we certainly have have like narrowed down the styles of masks that fit each person's face better. And now that we've got the better ear loops, I'm like, you know what? I should just put in uh, an evening of just knocking out some masks. So I'm kind of thinking about that um, because uh, one of my, my middle son is going to be uh, going and doing his internship in June and it it's sort of part in office and you know they're gonna insist that you wear masks so he's gonna need a bunch so yeah so that's kind of on my on my uh, radar and I've also been gonna, just kind of thinking about an easy quilt to do so I've got this uh, Irish chain quilt this uneven Irish chain that uh, is one of my favorite quilts I've ever made and I gave it away to my best friend so no regrets there but I kind of want to make my own I've, I've talked about this before it's just kind of hanging out there do you do that I have to like mull over things for you know months before I take action sometimes um, and I've got this fabric from years ago from a uh, Sadif from down grapevine lane um, I forgot maybe it's called sweet prairie it's one of her first fabric lines and um, I have a bunch of it um, because of this whole thing that happened with Riley Blake where they said um, we can't find your quilt we're going to give you a bunch of free fabric so um, so I've got two fat quarter bundles and backing um, to make a quilt I'm just like you know what I've never known what I was gonna do with that I just really like the fabric I like the colors so I'm like maybe I should just do something super easy like an Irish chain this uneven Irish chain and frankly it would still I could probably get another quilt out of those you know two fabric bundles because that quilt was designed to use the minimum amount of your actual print fabrics <laughs> because I had so little to work with at the time so I'm kind of kind of thinking about that the other reason to drag out the sewing machine is last podcast I talked about wanting to sew a linen tank top but I was kind of struggling with finding the right pattern well luckily for me um Andra from Andra Makes reached out to me and said, I think the um, the Ashton tank from Helen's Closet is exactly what you're looking for. It's got a facing instead of a hem, you know, because I didn't like the rolled kind of hems and necklines. And um, and she said, and on top of that, I am doing a whole sew long. She has a about an hour, hour and a half long um, tutorial video on her YouTube channel to show you how to make this tank top. So I will absolutely be doing that. Um, but again, it's kind of not top of my priority list right now just because things are, are happening. But I did buy the pattern and I've downloaded it and um, and you just need to print it and tape it together and, and figure out how much um, linen I have. One of my favorite ways to to get linen is from thrift stores. And I have some white linen um, that I bought a dress, a very full dress from a thrift store, oh, I don't know, five plus years ago, just because it was linen and it was like $3. It was like so much linen for $3. And um, so I might make it white, although I think it might be a little see-through. So what I really need to do is make a muslin first, you know, like the practice one. But for clothing, I don't, you know, because I'm a quilter, I don't have a lot of big cuts of fabric. I used to have a bunch of vintage sheets that I got super into thrifting um, back you know I don't know 10 years ago but in my last about a year or so ago we did a big full house declutter and and I think I got rid of all those and and no regrets on that the other thing that my my son has to read um, the joy luck club he could read the joy luck club or pride and prejudice he picked the joy luck club and he's like 
like, how do I get, how do, how does the whole library pickup thing work? And so when I found out it was Joy Lovecluck, I'm like, oh, I know, I have that book. And I went to the, the bookshelves and realized, oh, you know what? I think in the last purge, I got rid of that. Like, no problem. Actually, Chloe had it, so it was fine. But it is, you know how when you are doing the big declutter, you fear that you're going to want some things later on? You know, it happens, but no big deal. Um, I might even just pop into Goodwill and see if I can find a, 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 uh, a vintage sheet to just make a muslin of this of this tank top. So anyway, so that's that's on the radar too. I'm just a little bit interested in wearing more linen and sewing uh, a few bits of clothes. I'm never going to be the kind of person who makes a wool coat or a pair of jeans or my own bra, but I think I could do like some skirts and um, some tops. I think would be kind of fun to to sew. As always, I love it when you guys share what you are making. It doesn't have to be sewing or knitting. It can be all any kind of craft that you're doing um, or reading or watching. I love it when you guys share that in the Simple Handmade Everyday Facebook group. Um, it's your group too. I like to keep the conversation going, but you know, you guys, ha- we, we obviously have a lot in common, right? I get that all the time. Um, that I have a lot in common with my listeners. And you know what? You guys have a lot in common too. So share Anything, you know, you want that's, you know, on topic, (laughs) Uh, anything crafty, you know, uh, books, things you're watching, things like that, please feel free to share those in the group. So speaking of books, I've got some things to to share with you. So on my um, Libby app this year, I saw that there was, I think like once a year they have this, uh, they pick an an audio book that sort of they have unlimited copies for and so it's kind of like the the Libby book club (laughs) kind of book and this year was um, something called Love Lettering by Kate Claiborne I wrote her name down so down so badly I'm not 100% sure but I'll put it obviously I always put a link in the show notes so you don't have to write any of this down so it was a fun book okay but I'm gonna uh, give you a few disclaimers Um, it's a romance it's a modern romance which i realize as i'm listening to this you know <laughs> i don't hardly read anything that's in in modern times so that was a little bit weird you know, like to the point where you know she's got a social media um following and she's doing instagram stories and that kind of stuff always seems really weird to me when i read it in books just cuz i a lot read a lot of historical fiction um so it's it's definitely romance which is not usually my thing but it was it was fun and um, but it was a little racy. I, a couple of years ago, I learned the expression like um, closed door romance and open door romance. Um, I'm, you know, I, I think you can probably figure out what that means. I'm a closed door romance. I like, you know, a, a, to leave a lot to the imagination, so to speak. This was more open door romance, but it's like you're in like outlander and that doesn't bother you this will not bother you you know I'm, I'm kind of a prude when it comes to this stuff and so I'm I'm kind of you know like uh clicking forward <laughs> on some of the scenes um but it's about a girl a woman who lives in New York she's in her 20s and her job she's a graphic artist and she's into lettering so she letters um uh, like wedding invitations and she's actually carved out a whole career of doing planner layouts you know how like people with bullet journals do these you know elaborate layouts well (laughs) if you're rich enough you can pay people to do those layouts for you which I did not know was a thing Um, but she kind of becomes famous for doing that and um, so that, that that in itself is kind of interesting and there's a lot of talk in the book about lettering like because of what she does for a living, she sees letters kind of differently and she sees her like emotions, a kind of um, like love. She sees it. She sees it with the way it's written. And she'll talk about um, all those things that you know about if you're into lettering, like, you know, descenders and, and things like that. So, so that was kind of just an interesting thing. Um, But the idea is that she, um, she meets somebody who she lettered their wedding program and invitations um, she runs into this person, she lettered for them, but they did not end up getting married for various reasons that I don't want to spoil, but she, um, gets to know this person and, you know, it's a romance, but all kinds of things happen. It, it, it um, she's got issues with a best friend and it's, it's just really just kind of a fun contemporary story. Um, and things kind of take a crazy turn at the end. And, uh, so anyways, it was, it's not my favorite book ever, but it was entertaining. 
Um, the other book that uh, I enjoyed is called A Woman's Courage by Simon Block. So a few years ago, I talked about this show called Home Fires, which is on um, Amazon Prime. It was maybe on PBS too at one point. I think it was. Um, and it's about World War II and the WI, the Women's Institute in the small village and what they do to keep the home fires burning. And I loved it. It's, I've, <laughs> I've watched that series a couple of times. I'm re-watching it now um, because so that series got canceled before it really wrapped up. It kind of ended on a cliffhanger. So the, uh, the writer of that series then wrote a series of novels just picking up exactly where the show left off with how he envisioned it going. So that that was kind of the fun part. The, the not so fun part was those early novels um, were not well written. I said a lot that he's a better screenwriter than a novelist, but because I was so invested in the characters and the, the ebooks were pretty inexpensive, I didn't really care. It was just, I was along for the ride. I just wanted to know what happened to these characters. I think that he's getting better. He's on, I don't know, maybe the third or fourth book now at this point. Um, he wrote four very short books that eventually were put together into what is now the first novel. Um, and so this one's called A Woman's Courage. And it's just been, uh, you know, I, I just love this character. I love this, this little village. And, um, you know, we're really progressing, you know, years down this timeline at this point. It did inspire me to go back and, and rewatch um, Home Fires. And it's kind of an interesting relationship is, you know, I see these characters. And of course, when I'm reading the books, I'm seeing the characters that I know from the show. And now when I see them, I'm just like, oh, honey, you don't even know what's coming your way. Or, oh, you know, good thing. I'm thinking, you know, good things are going to be happening for you. You just hang on here. <laughs> so that's been kind of fun. And the other book that I read, I just finished yesterday, was called Empty Nesters by Carolyn Brown. I don't even know why I had this book downloaded onto my Kindle, but one night I'm just looking for something new. I'm like, okay, let me try this. It was one of those, um, what's it called? It's like prime reading. So it was a free book. And it turns out Carolyn Brown has written a lot of books. Um, I didn't really know much about her. And this was another contemporary and, you know, not really romance. It, it's a story of female relationships. So the prologue to this book has to do with um, this kind of elderly couple that lives on this block in Texas and um, three new families move in. The, the, the biggest part that I had to suspend my disbelief is that there's this th group of three families. The husbands are all in the military in the same black ops team and they all move to this little cul-de-sac at the same time and they all have um so they're on the same team they live in the same neighborhood they all have one girl that's all about the same age so all of that is just a little bit too much of a coincidence what are the chances there's going to be three houses that are off base that are available on one street <laughs> so so once i got over that then i enjoyed the rest of the rest of the ride so they move in they've got like five-year-old girls and this elderly couple who's also ex-military are just like thrilled to have a lot of you know sort of life on the block and then the next chapter that was the prologue the next chapter all three of those girls have are graduating high school and moving on to their next chapter of their life which is also military so they're all empty nesters all of a sudden and um they all have different um different things they're dealing with they're at every, every single one of them is at a bit of a crossroads in their life and they take this this trip in a motorhome um, across Texas to the, the, the matriarch in this situation, um, to her childhood home that the, she goes and visits once a year. They all go and um, the whole book takes place over like six to eight weeks, maybe eight weeks because at the end they go visit, they go to the, the basic training graduation for their daughters. And um, it's just, it's a really great story of, of um, you know, all these people, they're empty nesters. <laughs> But none of them are actually even 40. It's like they all got married at 19 and 20 and immediately had babies. So I'm about to be an empty nester this fall. Um, we've got three kids home now, but this fall they will all be gone, which is crazy. Um, but, you know, like I'm, I'm a good like 15 years older than all of them. But, you know, the same the same feelings remain. Um, so just it's a great story of, of female relationships. Totally enjoyed that. Um, I am listening to just started um 
the, oh, I can't remember what it's called and I didn't even bring my phone up here. Um, I got it from the, you know, Libby app. The first in the Inspector Lindley series by Elizabeth George. So the modern Mrs. Darcy had this um, blog post about what do you do when you you run out of Louise Penny books? And so they have like similar type of mystery things. And I have tried Elizabeth George and it has been um, recommended to me by you guys. Um, but I started like, I picked one up from the library once. It was like, you know, the 21st in a series and I just couldn't get into it. So I started at the beginning and I'm listening to that. I don't have opinion so far because it's pretty new, but um, yeah, I'm kind of enjoying, I love, I love a good series. I love not having to think about what the next thing I'm going to read or watch is. So um, that, that'll be kind of fun. So I'll let you know about that next time. And lastly, I got this book from the library called Fast This Way burn fat, heal inflammation, and eat like the high-performing human you were meant to be by Dave Asprey. So I think the sort of the the Bible of fasting, <laughs> of intermittent fasting, is the obesity code. But this is apparently um, supposed to be pretty good. I've only just started it. He's the guy that invented, created um, Bulletproof Coffee. If you've ever heard about that, which is coffee that's got like um, MCT oil or butter in it. And some other things that um, apparently you can, if you don't really, you know, adhere to the clean fasting rules, um, does not, uh, doesn't pull you really out of a fast and it can kind of help you get, <laughs> um, you know, from one meal to the next. So drinking bulletproof coffee in the morning will not spike your, your blood sugar so you can get all the way to lunch. So anyways, I'm still, you know, uh, charging on with the intermittent fasting. Um lost a few more pounds. It's, it's slow going, <laughs> it's slow going at my age, but, but still it's a very easy thing to, to work into, um, your lifestyle. And if you are insulin resistant or pre-diabetic or things like that, it can really help. So, so still continuing with that. Now let's move on to movies and TV shows, things like that. My husband and I finally finished Money Heist. If you've not watched that, there, there's some language and, you know, some sex in that. So if that is not your thing, like it's not that it's my thing, we just kind of <laughs> powered through that because the story was pretty good. Um, there's going to be a fifth season of that. Um, I've talked about Money Heist the last couple couple podcasts because it took us a while to get through that. So that was fun. But my, my fun watch um, that I want to talk to you about it, that, you know, I'm never the first on these things is Firefly Lane. Have you watched that? It is apparently was a book by Kristen Hanna. I tend to enjoy Kristen Hanna books mostly because, you know, she spells her name correctly. <laughs> um, but she did um, The Night, The Nightingale. Does that sound right? Um, yeah. And uh, uh, what was it called? The, the Big, The Great Alone. I, I read that a few, a year or so ago. So this is a story about female friendship. Man, I love my female friendship um, stories. So in the show, um, Catherine, is it Heigl? You know, from Grey's Anatomy. I'm just going to go with that pronunciation. Um, she and, oh gosh, I don't know how to pronounce anybody's name. Sarah, I want to say Chalk. Um, she was from Scrubs. Um, they, are, they are very different people, sort of opposites, that met as they were children on the street called Firefly Lane. And they really could not be, uh, they are polar opposites of each other. They had polar opposite upbringings. Um, the uh, Sarah's, Sarah's character um, named Kate, she had just, you know, the mom and dad traditional upbringing. And then um, the, the character that Catherine Heigl plays is named Tully. And she had this mom who was a drug addict and she was raised by her grandmother and then her mom and, you know, just had the worst childhood ever. And um, they become unlikely friends. And the most of, though it's, you know, one of those things that you see them in very different times when they are in, they probably meet in uh, like junior high. And then you also see them in their early career and college years. And then, but a lot of this takes place in the current time. And um, Tully is a famous talk show host and Kate is a stay-at-home mom and just they are both at crazy times in their lives and it's very interesting to see how the the friendship dynamic that they established when they were younger how that comes into play even you know what 25 years later um and 
they certainly set it up for a, a second season. So I hope that that is in the works. I haven't actually checked on that. But that is a, it's a network, a Netflix original. So Firefly Lane, um, really, really enjoyed that. Um, I already mentioned that I'm like rewatching Home Fires because I'm a rewatcher and, and joining, uh, enjoying that. And, and we watched a movie the other night when, um, when Chloe got her wisdom teeth out and she was kind of zonked on the couch. We watched a movie um, just trying to find. We have trouble finding movies that we want to watch. But um, came across, what was it on? I think it was probably on Netflix. It's called The Hustle. It's from a couple years ago, and it has um, Anne Hathaway and Rebel Wilson. I'd never seen anything with Rebel Wilson in it before, so that was kind of fun. I'm like, I know that name, um, so let's watch a movie. So that was fun, and my husband was watching it. So it's about these two women who are both total, um, you know, con artists, total hustlers, and who um, kind of accidentally, you know, one kind of does the high-class big con long con which is the Anne Hathaway character and then Rebel Wilson is more the um the short you know $200 $500 con and um they just have you know completely uh, different vibes of what they do but they kind of um their cons intersect <laughs> in a way and they start working together then against each other it's very funny um but as we're watching this my husband kept going god this this story seems so familiar well it turns out it is basically an adaptation of dirty rotten scoundrels that has um uh, michael kane and steve martin i haven't seen it um so i never would have gotten that but if you've seen that this is like the you know how they did oceans 8 was like the female version of <laughs> of like the ocean 11 heist movie um so this is kind of that it's the female version and it was super fun it was um so that was just like a a, a fun lightweight movie that i would totally recommend all right let's finish off this podcast with um a few more q a's a few more have come in and i said that i would um, answer them the first one is Am I still going with the the gray hair transition? <laughs> and how is it going? The answer is yes. It's been 13 months since I've had my hair colored. Um, you know, I was a golden blonde kind of person for, for many, many years, which was my, you know, natural hair color before. Um, but once I had chemo, my hair fell out. And when it grew back, it was definitely grayer. Things changed with my hair. It, it wasn't as curly, still curly, but not as curly and definitely more gray. And um, so I'm not sure, I, I am fairly sure that I would never have tried this gray grow out had it not been for COVID, but I'm kind of grateful for it. So um, <laughs> the person who asked this question, I think it was Nancy, she asked for a photo. I did take a photo to send to my friend Francis to kind of show her where I was at. And um, my hair's kind of wet in it, but maybe, maybe I'll put it in the show notes. Um, so I've got, you know, like what, six and probably six inches, six and a half inches um, of my grow out. And then, you know, my yellow, which I've been putting, I use purple shampoo, um, really, I think the gray, the silver depositing um, conditioner, it's called, tones down the yellowness of my, um, my old dye job the best, way over purple shampoo. But um, I scheduled an appointment to do the chop this week. <laughs> um, I've been nervous about it because it's definitely going to be shorter. Um, than I would normally want my hair to be. I, I like my hair long, but that there's, I remember a hairdresser telling me that the length right at your clavicle is a sort of a universally flattering hair length for people. And that's about how long my grow out is right now. And so um, there's been part of me that was like, you know what, just wait another couple months. And then, you know, cause I, I feel like I'm about an inch short, which is two months growth. But um it's kind of driving me crazy right now. So uh, it's Sunday now. I've got an appointment on Tuesday to get that cut. And um, maybe do, she mentioned um, the last time I got my hair cut, which has been months. Like, you know, I think if we just do a few highlights, it, it might just kind of brighten up the back. So the front of my hair is, is quite white. But the back is definitely, you know, a more of a mix. And it's kind of cool. It's just, it's the, <laughs> it's the transition of the warm, golden blonde look to the cool tones of white and kind of more silvery um so we'll we'll see how that goes um and then i've got the summer to kind of grow it out a little longer and then you know what 
If I don't like it, if I can't live with it, I am one die job away <laughs> from just saying, I will I will revisit this again in five to 10 years. But uh, I don't know, I'm kind of liking it. And uh, so we'll see how that goes. So I encourage you to share your gray hair transition photos in the group if you would like. I would love to see that. Um, but COVID really, I think there are a whole lot of people that have made um, this transition because it was just so much easier to live with the the demarcation line, um, you know, when you're not going out as much. So, and I wore my hair up, I'll, I'll like the sides up, so you see a lot of the light and 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 not so much of the the gold. But it will be different. Um, I think in some ways people still sort of experience me as a blonde because there still is so much hair that's blonde, and so we will see if what how that changes. Um. And then someone else asked, I think it was, uh, was it Teresa? Um, I should have checked that, I'm sorry. <laughs> if calories were no object, what would you indulge in? And I, you know, I've been thinking about that and I, that is a really hard question for me. So here's one thing. I have always loved really good pasta dishes and I don't really eat them anymore um, just because it's too many carbs. It's just for health reasons. It is just, you know, I've just kind of steered away from that. Like we went to a really nice Italian restaurant for our 25th wedding anniversary last month. And um, I'm just looking through them and just thinking, oh, you know, I shouldn't be eating any of these. Ultimately I did. I had like lobster gnocchi or something. It was delicious. But so um, from a like savory food perspective, I love good, rich pasta dishes. Um, And then obviously, you know, like the sweets, you know, like I didn't used to like a like chocolate cake, but I love a good, rich chocolate cake with like vanilla ice cream now. Um, I love pies. So so those sort of sweets would, um, I don't really like candy, but um, like, like really, you know, good, again, rich desserts that go well with coffee or red wine. Totally, totally up my alley. And you know what? I think I'm going to turn that question around in the group this week and um, ask people to uh, tell me what they would indulge in. And then when I hear those answers, I'll be like, oh, yes, 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 me too. Yep, me too. <laughs> I'm sure that's the way it, it always goes. Um, the last question is, do I wash my quilts after I finish them? And that's a great question. And the answer is no, I don't. Um, and I don't wash them before I give them away either. I do have a very nice printout from Diary of a Quilter that I now include when I gift a quilt that explains how to care for it. Um, I don't pre-wash fabrics and I kind of love to have, you know, it's like a different quilt when it's done and everything's really flat and and kind of pristine. Um, So I love to use the quilt for a while and then I have no issues with after a month or so washing it and then experiencing it, the whole crinkle factor side of things. So I like to to do it both ways. Um, But so no, I do not wash a quilt. And I will um, also put that over, you know, next week. I will put that as a a poll, as a question in, in the group. The last thing I wanted to share with you is I I told you at the beginning of this episode that I have succumbed to Facebook and and Instagram ads. And um, I've been wanting to um, buy some new makeup. I don't wear very much makeup and I kind of do sort of like invest in makeup and then I wear for a couple years and then I'm just like, okay, I need new makeup. And it's kind of been that time for me. And have you been seeing these ads for Ilia makeup? I-L-I-A. They have these fabulous... um, gray haired models, which is why I think I, you know, noticed them older models, you know, in their forties, fifties, sixties and up. Like I I see all kinds of them. Um, and so using this makeup, that's clean makeup has really good ingredients in it. And, um, I don't really usually wear foundation, but I saw a picture of myself recently and I thought, you know what, you could use a little evening out. Um, so they have this makeup called like super serum and they talk about it having a very dewy finish, um, that you actually don't even have to wear any moisturizer, any skincare underneath it because it's got skincare and SPF 40 built into it. Um, and I think that's true. Although I do like to put my little retinol, um, uh, on under it just because I think that the retinols do help. So anyways, I've watched these, you know, these, uh, these videos. I went on YouTube, watch these videos. Um, also they have these things called a multi stick, which is like a cream blush. You can actually also use it for your lips. And some people kind of even 
put a little bit on their um, as eyeshadow, which I don't do. I don't really want anything that's kind of pinky like that about my eyes. Um, so I was really intrigued by this. So it's a little pricey, I'll be honest with you. And this is, I'm not, don't have an affiliate link or anything, but I will link you over to their site. Um, so they have a gazillion colors of foundation. I'm like, well, I, I haven't even really worn foundation in years. So they have you take a selfie. I took the most, unfla I cannot take a selfie for the life of me. So I took a very unflattering selfie and you send it in. And I said, I'm interested in the foundation, concealer, and the multi-stick. What do you got? And it took like 24 hours, but they came back to me with, with recommendations. Now I went back and looked at those online and see how they describe them. And I was a little concerned because they talked about, um, I, I have kind of yellow undertones, so that would be warm undertones. And they talked about this, this foundation being good for people with cool undertones, which the whole thing may have been changed because of the fact that when I take this picture, I look like I have like white hair. So I was, it's expensive. And um, although it does have like a complete money back guarantee. So if you don't, if you don't get the right shade, you can send it back. Um, and they will send you another one, no problem. But they do, they, they have this line in Sephora stores. So last week, um, I was helping my daughter pick out glasses. So we went um, out glasses shopping and there's a Sephora in, um, in this town, Westlake. And um, so I'm like, let's go buy Sephora. I would like to see this makeup in real life. So they have, you know, it's like you have to wait outside. They only let three people in the store. Everyone's wearing masks. It's very interesting how they help you match a shade is they take a clear piece of plexiglass and they will swipe the different foundations on the plexiglass and you can walk over to the natural light and kind of hold it up against your skin through the the clear plexiglass um so anyways as i kind of suspected i i don't they i don't think they quite nailed it with the selfie picture um so she helped me i was in and out that was really nice um and so i've been using this makeup and I, apparently when you get a little bit older um you want to use more like cream fa uh, cream blushes as opposed to powders. Um, I think it just in terms of how it looks as on older skin looks, you know, a little bit better. So I've been having a lot of fun with this, this whole new makeup, you know, it was like, I don't know, like $150 for like everything. And um, I probably will not buy makeup again for another two years. So it works out for me. Um, but anyways, I would, I would highly recommend this, this brand. I would say that the, the foundation has, a little bit of a weird smell to it. It does dissipate, um, but I think it's because it's got these plant-based uh, things, something called like squalene or something. I think it's a little, I don't love the smell of it. Sometimes when you buy higher end cosmetics, they have just such great scents um, as part of them. This does not. Um, but anyways, I've just, I wanted to pass that on because I've, I've been enjoying that. And last but certainly not least, I would like to thank Monica May G for your lovely review. Um, again, I appreciate you guys reviewing the podcast. Although I have to say that in addition to Monica's lovely review, somebody left me a bad review, a one-star review, and said that it was dull and that I nattered on. <laughs> it kind of hurt my feelings. I know you got to be tough, but man, like who who gets who takes the time to leave a bad review? I don't know. So. That hurt my feelings, but I love the positive reviews. Um, and so thank you for doing that. Thanks so much for spending this time with me. I hope you had a lovely beverage in hand. I appreciate you guys so much. Let's keep the conversation going over in the Simple Handmade Everyday Facebook group. You can find me online at my blog, Simple Handmade Everyday, and over on Instagram as Kristen Esser. You guys have a wonderful day.